Hello everyone, my name is Kristen and this is my adorable Hall and Lop rabbit Astro in the corner uh, playing in his little dig box. I just wanted to hop on here to talk about um, his ear infection that we caught around September 4th and then now it's September 18th. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go through what kind of like medications we are prescribed, what the recovery has been like, how to look for signs if your rabbit has a ear infection and all that because this is his second ear infection and um, he's only three and a half years old. So if you have a Hall and Lop rabbit, it is likely that your rabbit will eventually get a ear infection in its lifetime, unfortunately. Um, they're just more prone to it because their ears are covering the cavity and so yeah uh, it can be pretty costly and so I'll also run through um, the prices. I'm just gonna talk about like what what had happened basically um, Astro started like I noticed that he started itching his ears a lot more frequently like you know rabbits they'll just like clean themselves and like or itch uh, but he was doing it uh, like more than a few times a day it was like upwards of like 10 and so I was like okay like I think it may be time for a vet checkup anyway so we'll just like run him to our vet um I, I do live in Vancouver BC and so we drive all the way out to Richmond which is about 45 minutes to an hour in Steveston to go see a vet specialist for rabbits because it is really tricky to find um a rabbit savvy vet in the area and so we just suck it up and drive out there because we know he's really good. And um, so that's what we did. I took him for his first checkup on September 4th, I think I mentioned. Uh, we did like a wellness exam. Astro is like known to be a very spicy rabbit at our vet. And so he actually like made it very difficult for the vet to see into his ear. What they do is like lift up the ears and then they have this like, scope that they look down into the cavity and like they can see wax and once they see wax they can like remove it to see if the, the eardrum and if there's any like white pus or film and so that day they weren't able to do that because Astro was basically very agitated he wouldn't really calm down and like let him uh, do the examination thoroughly and so that was like for both ears it was happening and since he had had an ear infection before we decided that the best course of action for this time was to just like give him ear drops for a week and then we'd come in for a follow-up checkup to see um, what to do next and follow up and that's when he was able to actually see into the ear properly and uh, decided that like he did see white film which was an indication that there is a ear infection and there's inflammation and so what he did was um, do an ear flush and that's they're just like flushing water and I think some, I would have to check, I don't want to say the wrong thing, um, but I will insert it in the text. Um, and anyways, so like they, they do that, they try to avoid that as much as possible because it can make your rabbit off balance for a couple days, but if there is a confirmed infection, that's definitely going to be the first step that they do. And so uh, they also gave him injectable antibiotics and inflammatory drugs and then we brought him back home and we're basically on the medicine schedule that we're on right now, which is a logistical nightmare. Like I will say, um, there's so many medications that we're prescribed and one was, or like two of them is because uh, he had an adverse reaction to one of them that was prescribed. So anyways, I am going to quickly go through the types of medicines that we have been giving Astro for the last two weeks. Uh, these are the eardrops. And so this is Ocuflox and they're actually um, eye drops for a cat, but because uh, rabbits don't really have their own medicine like area like of study. So we use um, oftentimes like cat and dog medicine. And so this has been treating his ears for a while. I think I mentioned it's four drops in each ear every 12 hours. So um, this is like the, the worst part of the process because I mean, you, you have to like hold your rabbit down and like put the drops in and it tickles them and they just wanna like run away and it makes them very agitated. 
the next medicine that you will likely receive is some kind of antibiotic. And so in our case, we got an enrofloxacin, um, and then we got the quantity for 14 days. And supposed to be giving him 0.8 milliliters um, every 12 hours for 14 days starting at 9 p.m. So that's also been on a 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. schedule with his antibiotic. And what else? So the other medicine that was prescribed for him because he had an infection was an anti-inflammatory. And so this one is called Meloxin. Um, so unfortunately, this medicine has an indicator saying stop if diarrhea or stool is seen. And that is what happens. So after I think like three doses, he um, started getting black stool and uh, diarrhea. And so we called our vet, we discontinued using the uh, inflammatory or anti-inflammatory um, medicine. And their concern was that if they do have this symptom, it is a likely case that there was an ulcer um, developing because of it. And then so to, we ended up having to treat an ulcer in addition to an ear infection, which is like very heartbreaking. So we were prescribed two more medications. Um, let's see, so this one is uh, famotidine and we're supposed to give 0.2 milliliters by mouth every 12 hours for seven days and then reduce it down to five days and such. And then another one for treating an ulcer was sulcrate. And um, yeah, so this one was supposed to be 0.25 milliliters uh, by mouth every eight hours for seven days. And this one, you actually have to give two hours before food and two hours before this medicine. So this is where it's like getting tricky because we already have uh, the ear drops, we have his antibiotic, and uh, we had the anti-inflammatory. And because Astro has a pre-existing condition of epilepsy, we are already medicating him with anti-seizure medicine uh, three times a day. And so you can imagine that it ended up being like every two hours, like we were waking up at 5 a.m. and then again at 7 a.m. to like feed him and medicate him 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m. It was actually like insane and I don't wish it on anyone and especially like your rabbit because that's just so much medicine going through his little body, right? Um, but yeah, it was kind of frustrating that this even happened because I had researched um, the amoxicillin, the inflammatory drug that actually caused this whole other ulcer problem and it's a dog medicine and it's only... It hasn't even been researched in like if it's like effectiveness in puppies, let alone cats. And so I was a little frustrated that it was even prescribed because last time he had an infection, like an ear infection, they didn't give this to him. It, it's like research is just so not there when it comes to rabbits. And I feel like, uh, like I don't want to hate on my vet for this. Like I just feel like it was a bad mistake and maybe talk to your vets if they ever pre prescribe moxicillin. Um, it's like, I think he's just like that type of sensitive bunny. He's had so many different like ailments since we've had him and he's only three and a half. So sometimes that just happens. Like the second checkup, we have been monitoring him and like giving him all of his meds. And so he's become a really like hostile rabbit. So usually Astro is very like cuddly. He's always like in whatever room we are in. He's like on the couch, like cuddling just like he loves us so much and he's like such a happy uh free roam rabbit and so um with all of this medicine like he's learned to completely like distrust us right because like rabbits don't like being picked up and what we've had to do is like pick him up put the eardrops in and then he just gets like really pissed off doesn't trust us he's really afraid around us like I find uh, we will be walking in the direction just like trying to get to or something and like because he thinks like that we're after him and so he'll run and hide and or thump he's been thumping a lot more at us which is just like the one thump which means like a big like f you like get out of my face kind of thing and so yeah that's been like a learning process for us and 
and him like we're gonna have to rebuild our bond after this is all over which is one of the saddest parts about it i just hope that he makes it through and gets healthy and that we caught it in time so that i to get back into my chair without making him think i'm after him so he can go back and play in his box and this is the beginning of our the recovery of our relationship isn't it honey no, you just don't trust me at all. Or if your rabbit does have uh, an ear infection, um, basically a lot of itching. You'll notice that like rabbits are prey animals and so they do a very good job at hiding any illness that they are feeling. Um, we have learned this in the past and with him, with him having GI stasis. And so uh, just you really need to know your rabbit and its body language. And that really helps if you do have a free roam rabbit. And what I mean by that is no cage. Um, so they have like the full area to like showcase their personality and you really get to know your rabbit this way. And so I can pick up like in a second that something is wrong with him. Like I know when he's like grumpy or not eating something or so, like something is off. And so that is essentially what happened. Like I just noticed he was itching his ears more often uh, for severe cases. If it's gone on too long, they can get um, like a little off balance. So if they're like falling over when they're itching to one side um, also, and if the pain gets so bad, they could start going into GI stasis. So if they're not eating or drinking their water, that's also a red, red flag, but like a little tilt to the side of their head can happen, but that can be confused with like another common illness that rabbits get, which is E. caniculi, it's a parasite. Either way, uh, it's really important to just go through like really frequent vet checkups. Uh, my vet recommends every six months just for a wellness exam because rabbits health can deteriorate very quickly. Things can change uh, super fast. So basically I called uh, the vet and I was just like, can we discontinue the eardrops? They are the worst part of the uh, scenario, but also, I mean, like it sounds like it's the most needed medication because like you're treating an ear infection, of course you need eardrops. Um, but because we've been giving him the eardrops for two weeks now, we only technically have one more week to go. The bottle's getting pretty empty and I just feel like it's not worth it to continue with his mood because he actually uh, went through a phase where he was not eating. Astro has been very challenging today. I'm happy to see him eating because I haven't seen him eat too much. I just put all of his dinner in here because he's not excited to come out to the kitchen. Um, where he doesn't feel close to his bed that he can run under and hide. And so I just wanted to give him some banana to make sure he was eating. But when I came back into the room, he was already eating some celery. He just didn't want to eat it in front of me at the time. If your rabbit is ever sick and you're worried about GI, always offer it banana. If it turns down banana, it's a sign that you should definitely be running it to the vet. Unfortunately, he's still eating. He's just super picky. He doesn't like this batch of lettuce for some reason. That's kind of been going on for the last few weeks. Maybe he'll take a pepper. I don't know. He's being so weird ever since we've been medicating him so much. He just wants the banana that's on my fingers. Just take the pepper, baby. Yep, so that is the quick update for now. Just one more week of this. I actually just forgot to mention that um, just the other day, so it's September 18th, we called the vet on the 17th having concerns about Astro because he uh, wasn't eating. So like it started by him refusing to eat like certain things. So he would like start with like lettuce, like all of a sudden he doesn't like lettuce anymore. And then uh, he didn't like cucumbers anymore. And I was just like, okay, like maybe the medicine's just making him really picky. That's fine. Like I'll still, as long as he's eating and like still um, moving around and not looking like hunched, uh, we'll just monitor it. And so as the day went on, he was like not really eating even his favorite food. So like I would present to him like parsley and cilantro and then basil and he wasn't eating those. And like, that's a huge, like normally I would 
pick him up, put him in a carrier, and run to the ER, because if they're turning down food, um, that's a big sign that they're heading into GI stasis, if not already are in GI stasis, and you need to act like really quickly to get them out of it and get them on motility drugs um, and get their gut moving again, essentially, before they die, because they can die within uh, 48 hours, which is pretty grim. Um, so anyways, we were on high alert for that. And then keep in mind, so I, I had mentioned that Astro is a free roam bunny and his favorite, like his absolute favorite place in the apartment is under our bed in the bedroom. Uh, he has been like that since a baby. Uh, that's been his like, anytime we bring him back from a vet or a trip or anything, like he goes and hides under there for a few hours to just kind of like de-stress, decompress, like get back to normal um, levels. And so because we've had to medicate him so much, we decided that it was better for us to just keep our bedroom door closed during the day to prevent him from being able to get under the bed because once he's under the bed, like it's a king size and we cannot freaking get him out from under the bed. Like it's this like battle trying to like get him out and he just like runs to the other side. And then, so we wanted to avoid that. Uh, we did it once, didn't want to do it again. And so like he was still eating and then he was getting grumpier as the day progressed because he was just like hanging out under this like love seat because it's like one of the only other places he can fit. It has like a big enough gap for him to go under. And so yeah, he's been under there um, most of that day. And then so like around dinner time, I noticed he, that's when he started not eating even his favorite foods. And so we kept an eye on it for about four hours. And we're like, okay, what if we just decide to let him go under the bed? We know he's missing it. He has been like hopping over to the hallway and scratching at the door aggressively like a few times today. Like he really wants to be in there. So we open the bedroom door. He goes running <laughs> under the bed and we check on him within an hour. He is starting, like we present him food and he's starting to eat again. And his favorite foods, a hunger strike because he didn't get his way from like being under the bed and like room, which is absolutely insane that he even would consider starving himself because he's not happy in his surroundings and like where he wants to be, which is just like mind boggling to me. I'm glad we ended up waiting and it was just like this fluke thing because we could have lent him to the vet and like we would have had to go under so many different testings and it would have been the expensive ER and it all would have been for just him being like a very grumpy bunny. Let me give you some time to de-stress before we call and let them know we're here. So I have Astro just sitting on my lap here. I always give him the option to come out of his uh, carrier if he wants to. He usually doesn't like sitting in there. If we're both going to um, the vet, he would prefer sitting on my lap. And so I just put my coat over him so he's not so stimulated by what's going on in the car. I always play like nice guitar music, like no lyrics, no like super loud music, just anything that will calm him down. And he has his little eyes closed. He's kind of shaking because he's breathing heavy because he's obviously scared They he hates a car ride. In the situation that he's in, he's gonna go probably hide under the bed for the rest of the day, but look how cute. The only lap cuddle time that I can get. Unfortunately, it's in these circumstances though. It's been a while since I made a video on how Astro and his ear infection have been doing and ulcer. Um, so it is December 7th. I got kind of caught up with school and finals and working full time, so totally forgot to make a video on his progress. Um, we ended up taking him in for his last vet checkup on October 15th, and our vet said that the ear infection was gone, there was no more uh, pus in his ears, which is amazing, and it seems like the ulcer has gone away too. We've discontinued all medicine. and. Uh, now he's just back to his happy bunny self ever since we brought him home that day. So, it's great news. We have moved forward since then. It almost feels like it didn't happen, but 
it did hit our wallets pretty hard. So I am going to go over the costs. Um, the first <laughs> wellness exam uh, back on September 4th ended up costing uh, $123. That day we got eardrops for 50 and the actual wellness exam uh, was $72. And then the next visit that we went to, we we did two week intervals, had to drive out to Richmond each time. And so uh, the last, the next one we did was September 11th, and that one was the big bill. That's uh, because we confirmed that he had the ear infection. We had to give him injectables, uh, another follow up exam, gave him antibiotics. Like we had to get all of the medicine essentially that day to start the healing process. And so that was $300. One was on September 26th. So another two weeks after that, we did another progress exam. Um, he still had the ear infection that day. So uh, they gave him another bound, um, batch of antibiotics and another batch of uh, GI a probiotic paste to help with his gut flora. And so that ran us $119.77. And then the very last appointment we did was no medicine needed. It was only $47.25 for his progress exam. Uh, there is one bill that I didn't mention that came from uh, his ulcer meds. So when we had to go pick up his ulcer meds that time, we actually just got it sent to a Vancouver clinic so we didn't have to drive out to Richmond again. And so uh, that was $30 total. And so the grand total um, was $640. Yeah, $640 for an ear infection in our little rabbit. It's wild how much vet care costs for rabbits and I just want this to be an example to always have money set aside for emergencies. You just really never know when something is gonna go down with their health. Like I think just that summer we had spent a few hundred on dental. It is a little less expensive than ours. Just a reminder we do live in an expensive city uh, so that is a large factor um, into the costs as well made it this far this video is very long-winded lots to talk about during this month and a half ordeal um i really appreciate that you have stayed tuned this long um definitely appreciate it and so thank you hopefully i'll be making another video soon more about his seizures